Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my review for Weymouth Youth Wrestling, or WIW for short. Gold Rush Tournament Round 2, Episode 2. You know, because I thought Round 1 was a fantastic episode. Might as well watch Round 2, so that's what I plan on doing right now. And really excited to be watching it. We're going to have uh, the culmination of Round 2 of the Gold Rush Tournament, and we're going to find out everyone that's going to be involved in the quarterfinals. Um... The matches that are announced for this show are, uh, they announced it on their podcast, uh, Zach Kurosaki vs. Sean Maverick, Jay Bones vs. Taka Michinoku, Mark Young vs. Jason G, and Kyle Weaver vs. Corey Dangerous. I think all those matches will be very exciting, and I'm not really going to waste any time. I'm just going to watch the episode right now, but before I do that, um, how I will structure this review will be the same as last time where I'll make like a ton of small videos and just combine it all into one big video. So now that I've said that, let's get right into the review. Okay, so this episode started off with an intro video package showing everything that took place um, in the last episode. Um, in episode one of the, the Gold Rush Tournament with... The Athena Championship Tournament and all the matches in Gold Rush, which I thought was very well made. And it shows everyone that's going to be in this episode. And I thought this video package was very well made. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned it before I forget. And now I just showed the Pyro and everything, which it's awesome to see Pyro. Always got to say it's cool to see it because Pyro's awesome. Okay, so this show took place in Frisco, Texas. We had Nathan Fowell. Jonathan Cato and Casey Gallagher on commentary for this show. And the show actually kicked off right with a match, which I like. You know, um, sometimes it's nice to kick right off right with a match. Since this is the Gold Rush Tournament and you expect, you know, um, a tournament to take place, why not just kick it off right with a tournament match? Keep, um, kick off the show with a Bane. Um, and it was um, round two of the Gold Rush Tournament. It was a Extreme Wolves Falls Count Anywhere match. Sean Maverick versus um, Zach Kurosaki. And this was a great match to kick off the show. And, you know, I like the storyline they did for this match. This was the first time that these two uh, wrestlers were going to go up against each other in WIW. You know, Zach Kurosaki, who made his name all over the world in Japan, um, showing some highlights of his career. And how he was like a big star there. Uh, Sean Maverick, who made his name um, in WIW. And was, was a pretty good, um, huge star. They both talk about how they're going to win this for the good of their country. But they're not. it's not like completely though that it's United States versus Japan. Um, the, you know, Zach Kurosaki wants to prove that he's the best. And he's also sick and tired of riding, not really riding people's coattails, but... Uh, trust in people in this tournament because he's going to do whatever it takes to win the tournament and become the first ever um, WIW World Champion. You know, Sean Mavic wants to prove why he's the best. Um, so, I like the storyline going into this match. And let's talk about the match itself. I gotta say, uh, Sean Mavic just has all types of main event level potential. He is definitely a strong candidate to win this tournament and become the first ever WIW World Champion. Uh, just with the way he comes out, the he just looks like a star. Um, and I think they could do a lot with uh, Sean Maverick. Uh, Zach Kurosaki, though, I really like. Yeah, I like how his really quick, agile offense. Um, but let's talk about the match itself. Zach Kurosaki immediately starts off the matchup with just hitting a drop kick out of nowhere right on to... Um, Sean Maverick, and he goes for a springboard and moonsault, but Sean Maverick moves out of the way and hits a um, German suplex on him and then a belly-to-back um, suplex um, into the uh, center of the ring. And he hits a cold, cold blue on him. Um, he hits a wicked um, weapon of, of destruction punch like right off the bat, right onto... Uh, Zach Kurosaki, and which I thought that was uh, pretty goddamn cool. Um, and Zach Kurosaki hits a drop kick. Uh, Sean Mavic hits a uh, jumping axe hand, no jumping um, punch fist drop uh, right off the top turnbuckle. Tries to get a couple on the outside, but gets a near fall. He throws uh, Zach Kurosaki into the steps, 
uh, throws him into the barricade. He plums him up against the barricade and grabs a crutch from the hand and hits Zara Kurosaki right in the back of the head with a crutch. Uh, covers him. Zach Kurosaki kicks out. And, um, Zach Kurosaki, uh, hits a wicked drop kick again. He goes, um, he hits a, another axe handle, um, which I thought, you know, that was really goddamn cool. Um, Sean Maverick goes for a kendo stick, but Zach Kurosaki moves out of the way from it and, um, grabs the kendo stick, hits, um, Sean Maverick in the ribs with it, and then he just beats the crap out of him with a kendo stick. Then he gets a replica, uh, World Heavyweight Championship belt, um, and he hits, um, Z Sean Maverick right off the head skull with it, and I thought that was, you know, pretty goddamn awesome. Um, and then he puts him in the ring, uh, Sean Maverick, um, you know, they continue to wrestle, and, um, Zach Kurosaki hits a, um, I think, um, a wicked quick arm drag, which is like a signature right on to, uh, Sean Maverick, which is really cool. Sean Maverick hits a jackhammer, uh, Zach Kurosaki kicks out, and then they grab a ladder, uh, Zach Kurosaki hits a blockbuster, um, off the ladder right on to, uh, Sean Maverick, which was really goddamn cool, and then they both, uh, hit an axe handle, um, on each other, while Sean Maverick's on the ladder, and Zach Kurosaki's on the turnbuckle, it might have been vice versa, but it was just so goddamn awesome, that was really goddamn cool, um, they do some stuff with the table, they grab a table, and, um, Zach Kurosaki, uh, Hurricane, um, Sean Maverick onto the table, but it doesn't break, and then, Zach, um, he hits a back suplex, uh, but the, um, with the table, but, um, like, folded up with one leg, but, um, and this time it breaks, which was obviously pretty goddamn cool. And then later on, earlier in the match, when, uh, Zach Kurosaki went to go off the top turn buckle, um, Sean Maverick caught him into a belly-to-back suplex, uh, which I love that move. He, uh, Zach Kuros um, Sean Maverick destroyed Zach Kurosaki with these German suplexes. I thought, um, Zach Kurosaki he was going to get injured or something. Um, but the match still, uh, continues. Um, Sean Maverick hits the 12 gauges the first time, but, it, um, Zach Kurosaki kicks out. He ends up hitting the Titan Towers punch. Zach Kurosaki kicks out again. He hits a Dragon's punch, and he goes for, um, I forget what he calls it, but, like, uh, the Rising Sun, that's what he calls it. Um, but Sean Maverick moves out of the, uh, moves out of the way. Bounces Zach Kurosaki head first on the announcer's table and then throws him into the steps. Um, Zach Kurosaki tears apart the announcer's table and he hits the arm drag a second time um, on the announcer's table. Uh, but Sean Maverick just gets right up from it. He hits the, um, a back suplex onto the table, um, onto the shadow remains of the table, um, which that was pretty goddamn awesome as well. They do some stuff with uh, the steps. They set up two wind steps with the ladder across it, and Zach Kurosaki hits an arm drag onto him, uh, Sean Maverick hits a belly-to-back suplex onto him, a jackhammer into one of them, which was really goddamn cool, Sean Maverick hits a powerbomb through the ladder, and Zach Kurosaki kicks out of that, um, they went through the ladder like three times, Zach Kurosaki hit a back suplex through a ladder, kick out, um, another ladder gets destroyed when Zach Kurosaki hits a back suplex through the ladder, which that was really goddamn cool as well, um, Zach Kurosaki hits a uh, springboard Horikirana, and he knocks Sean Maverick at one point off the steps, and he goes hit first into the other one, and then he hits a moonsault, uh, but he um, still kicks out. Zach Kurosaki hits like three um, high knees in a row, right while uh, Sean Maverick's prone up against the barricade, and then he hits another one in knee, but Sean Maverick uh, kicks out of that. And after so many 12 gauges and things like that, uh, the, what finally does not in is Sean Maverick grabs the, well, actually, no, the, there's still more to that. Sean Maverick grabs the steel steps, Zach Kurosaki goes to die, but he ends up hitting the steps on the way down. Uh, Zach Kurosaki hit, like, three throwbacks in this match, but one of them, when he hit the throwback, he ended up going into the steps himself, which almost cost him in the end. Um, Zach uh, Sean Maverick hits a German suplex into the kendo stick and then an elbow drop, but Zach Kurosaki kicks out of that. Um... Sean Maverick hits a back suplex, like, into the steps, and he ends an elbow drop, another near fall, and then eventually, uh, the finish, and Sean Maverick busts 
uh, no, Zach Kurosaki busts John Maverick open with a replica title belt, throws him into the post um, head first, and then um, Sean Maverick busts him open out um, by just punching uh, Zach Kurosaki a ton of times. But then eventually the finish comes when Zach Co when Sean Maverick hits the 12 gauges right into a ladder that was set up on top of the two steel steps for the win. Uh, but this match was just great. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a hell of a open and round match. I was happy Sean Maverick went over because I think they can do more with him than they can with Zach Kurosaki. Not that Zach Kurosaki is bad, but I think Sean Maverick just has more star potential. Uh, but this was still a great match. I'm giving it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, now they're going to face the winner of uh, Taka Michinoku and um, I believe Taka Michinoku and J-Bone. So definitely going to be interesting to see who wins that. But yeah, I thought this was a great match here. Next was a Extreme Wars Falls Count Anywhere uh, Gold Rush Round 2 Tournament Match. Uh, Taka Michinoku versus J Bones. Um, I love the storyline of this match because obviously Taka Michinoku came in with a face mask and he was all taped up from the attack by London Devastation um, in his last tournament match, which I think was like episode 3 um, in round 1. Um, so they worked around that where, you know, J Bones didn't want to hurt Taka Michinoku because he's his idol and. Um, he didn't want to be the one to take him out, but Taka Michinoku saw it as disrespect. Um, so this led to a fight backstage that the referee had to break up. We didn't see it, but they kind of told us this. I kind of wish they would have showed this maybe like earlier in the show. I did like another WIW exclusive video, but maybe they didn't have time to put one together because, uh, that would have been pretty damn cool. But this match was great. Um, I, I don't know if I like this match more or, um... The first one was Sean Maverick and, uh, um, yeah, Sean Maverick and Zach Kurosaki. But this match was great. I love the storyline in the match, like I said, where Jay Bones didn't really want to give it his effort um, to Taka Michinuku. But Taka Michinuku saw it as disrespect towards him. So Jay Bones was kind of at a crossroads a little bit. Um, and. I actually thought that Taka Michinoku was losing here. I'm like, okay, the injuries are going to get the best of him, and he's not going to win. They're going to do the storyline where, you know, he'll fight valiantly, but, uh, you know, uh, his injuries would just be too much for him. Well, they went a different direction. They kind of went in that direction, but they went in a different direction. Uh, but they start off by having a match. Um, you know, they hit, like, back suplexes, moonsaults, and stuff like that. Um, but Jay Bones still really doesn't want to hurt Taka Michinoku, but Taka Michinoku's telling him to. Um, they do a ton of extreme stuff in this match. Taka Michinoku hit a moonsault off the ape, um, off the apron to the table. Um, he threw, uh, Jay Bones into the steps. Um, referee, though, even was, uh, you know, um, uh, taking a bit of the bulk here, too. Like, Taka hit a tape, hit... Uh, Jay Bones with the table and the referee fell down along with him. Uh, the ref uh, Jay Bones inadvertently hit the referee with a table, not a table, a, a, a guitar. But um, yeah, uh, Jay Bones hit a curb stomp right into a slug chamber, but Taka still kicked out, which that surprised me. I thought that was going to be it right there, and I wasn't even going to come on here and say that that should have been it. But what what the finish ended up this match being probably shouldn't have been it. Uh, Taka Michinuku hit an elbow drop through the announcer's table and um, hit a moonsault. He had like three moonsaults in this match. Um, this match was just insane. I really enjoyed it. Um, J-Bones hit a um, AK-47 first into the ladder, then into the slug champ of a Taka Michinuku kicked out both times. Taka Michinuku hit like several Michinuku drivers. One regular, one into the ladder. Um, and then one, like, through a table, but Jay Bones kicked out of it all four times. Taka Michinoku hit a wicked twist and, su um, brain buster suplex, one into the slug chamber, and then one just, reg um, outside the ring. Jay Bones grabbed the wind bell and hit Taka Michinoku with it, and then DDT'd him right onto the wind bell. Um, Jay Bones hit a wicked, uh, whisper, whisper on the wind, um, a wicked dive right onto the outside. Taka Michinoku hit a springboard plancha, which was awesome. Uh, this match was just 
awesome. Just really back and forth. I even love how they were talking crap to each other with, uh, you know, Taka Michinuku telling Jay Bones not to put pity on him. And Jay Bones saying, um, you know, telling him to stay down. Not stay down being a heel, but stay down saying like he doesn't really want to extract this much damage on a Taka Michinoku. Um, and Jay Bones ended up uh, hitting an elbow drop right onto the, um, you, no, a leg drop, not an elbow drop, um, off the top turnbuckle, which ended up hurting his leg, which prevented him from being able to go to, to the for the curb stop later on in the match. Um, and he ended up hitting Taka Michinuku, busting him open, whipping his face mask off with the guitar, which was awesome. Uh, Taka Michinuku with like a big heel kick hit, uh, busted J-Bones open. And eventually the finish comes when uh, J-Bones goes for a leg drop off a ladder through a table. But Taka Michinuku just rolls out of the way in the last second. Hits the top, um, the Michinuku driver on the floor. Gets the win. And I was surprised by this. I didn't think Taka Michinuku was going to go over in this matchup. I thought it was easily going to be J-Bones. But they gave it to Taka. And it's really weird saying that this is an upset that, um, you know, Taka Michinoku, who's like this big legend in the business, um... You know, beating J Bones is an upset, but considering all the injuries that he had in this match, um, you know, um, I thought uh, it was an upset, and I really thought it made the match because it kind of puts over this tournament that it's important to win, puts over the first ever WIW World Championship as prestigious. Um, so I really like this. I thought this was great. I'm giving this match. Four and a quarter stars. I don't think it was quite as good as the first one, but I thought this one was great. I thought this match story was probably better um, with Taka Michinoku. Um, and now he faces Sean Maverick, and uh, I actually can't wait to see that match. Taka Michinoku versus Sean Maverick, I think, will be a spectacle, and I really can't wait for this. So, yeah, great match here. Wow. What a match I just watched. Now we're in the Athena Championship Tournament. Uh, but before I break down this match, let me break down the whole tournament. So, um, the matches um, in the tournament, I'm going to say was, because obviously one of them has already happened. Um, the first round of all triple threat matches, triple threat elimination matches, first was... Colleen Horizon versus Vamp Candy versus Breezy Wee, but that but that match happened last episode. Colleen Horizon um, advanced to the semifinals, but the other matches in the quarterfinals are Rachel Stomper versus Brittany um, May Holmes versus Jonah Ramos, um, Deanna Thomas versus Rebecca Rose versus Lizzie Gray, and the match that just happened. Alicia Vasile versus Vyra McGolden versus Jenna Vasile. Um, I think these are going to be, I think thus far from what I've seen in this tournament, this is going to be a fantastic tournament. Um, the first match in the tournament was awesome, but this match popped it easily. Um, this was a fantastic triple threat match. And I do like that um, I asked for brackets and I got brackets so that's awesome but let's talk about this match it's uh like I said it's uh um it's a extreme rules falls count anywhere elimination match Alicia Facile versus Vyra McGodin versus Jenny Facile um this match was just fantastic um I love every way it was broken down the only criticism I have about the match is I thought it was a little too long. I think they could have maybe, um, you know, cut, like, you know, five minutes from this match because it did get a little long. But other than that, I thought it was a fantastic match. Um, but let's talk about it. So, obviously, uh, Alicia and um, Jenna Fasil are both sisters. So they kind of worked around that. The Facile sisters worked together to take out, um, je to take out, uh, um, sorry, I have the people's names right here. Viva McGolden, um, and that's basically was like the first part of the match was, uh, they just absolutely decimated, uh, Viva McGolden. I thought that was pretty damn awesome, actually. Um, you know, uh, 
they beat the crap out of her. Uh, Viva McGordon tries to get like some offense in like right away, knowing she's going to get double team, but it doesn't really work. Uh, the numbers game just catches up to her. Uh, the Vasil sisters hit a double su double suplex on her, and you know the first half of the match is really Viva McGordon, like you said, trying to fight back, but the Vasil sisters just continuously dominate her. Uh, they hit various spots such as you know. Uh, um, an Irish um, um, Alicia Irish whipping her into a you know into into Jenna getting hit, um, hitting her with a slug hammer, um, a suplex a superplex in, um, up into a uh, splash off the top rope, um, a um, you know throwing her into the steps, um, hit uh, hitting her uh, with baseball bats, um, a double double choke slam twice, once in the win and then once outside the win. Um they just beat the crap out of her. They uh hit her with a ladder. Um they I believe uh you know uh hit a neck breaker onto her. Uh they hit a um springboard as like, you know, Alicia's standing up, uh which was pretty goddamn cool. You know, but Alicia's doing everything she can to try to fight back, but it's just really not working. Um, eventually, though, uh, when, um, Alicia goes, not Alicia, sorry, um, not Alicia, sorry, uh, Viva. but eventually when Alicia goes to go on the top rope, um, Viva t double cross, not Viva, um, Jenna double crosses her sister and hits a draping DDT onto her, and then it just breaks down into abso an absolute chaotic, uh, triple threat match, um, you know, um, Ali, uh, the Fasil sisters are fighting with each other. Um, Alicia hits a superplex to Jenna, uh, right onto the steel steps, which Viva put there. Uh, and basically, there was really nothing that you know they could do about it because they were already like up in the air, so there was really nothing they could do about it. So I actually like that spot. Uh, Viva, um, I wish whipped the Fasil sisters into the tum, um, into the tum buckles, um, in the, well into the corner, I should have said, and just. Hits Alicia um, right in front of her, um, right with a steel chair like three times, which was pretty goddamn awesome. Um, Alicia brings in a trash can, and you know, Viva tries to hit a dive but uh, misses, and Alicia throws the trash can outside the wind. That was pretty goddamn cool. Um, can't lie about you know, can't lie about that. Um, Jenna hit a phone and hammer onto Alicia right onto a ladder that was on the outside. Um, they. Um, but, you know, um, Alicia and, uh, Vi Viva worked together for in this match and hit a double choke slam. Um, but then eventually Viva just turned on Alicia, hit in a reverse neck breaker, which was pretty goddamn cool. Um, I mean, I liked it anyways. Um, and they, uh, hit a drop kick and they just really killed each other throughout, uh, the, that portion of the matchup. Um, you know, um, Ali um, Alicia hit her finisher. Uh, which I forget, I think it's, I forget what it is, but she tried to win that way. Um, but then eventually, uh, Viva hits a moonsault through the announcer's table, and Alicia hits a one herself, and Viva, um, onto Jenna, and Viva covers Jenna, no, sorry, not onto Jenna, onto, um, Alicia. It was a genuine Ali Viva that did it, and, um, uh, Viva covers, um, Alicia, and she gets eliminated, uh, but, it, um, the match, um, was, like, going, like, about 30 minutes, um, at that point, so, um, I thought it was awesome. So then it's just down to Viwa and, um, Viwa and Jenna, um, and they just proceed to have a clinic when it's just down to them. They hit a lot of awesome stuff in this match, you know, Jenna hit a, you know, Viwa hit a power bomb, like a, um, t buckle bomb, off the uh, tone buckles right onto uh, the steel steps. Jenna hit a, um, a, a burden hammer uh, a second time on the outside but didn't get the win. She beat the crap out of Viva like, for like a minute with a champ replica championship title. Um, which that was pretty goddamn cool. Viva speared Jenna through the barricade. Um, hit a moonsault like right to the back of the head. Um, what else? Uh, you know, uh, Viva hit another buckle bomb this time on the um, on the la on a ladder. Um, 
and Vi um, Vi um, Jenna, um, Jenna hit a Angel's Wind but didn't get the pinfall. Uh, they just proceeded to really have put on a clinic with each other. This is kind of like one of those matches you really have to see because um, if I try to like remember like every spot, like you know, Jenna threw um, Viwa went through the um, a trash can, but then Viwa had a DDT on the ladder on the ladder that was on the outside. Um, I believe uh, Jenna tipped the ladder over on the, uh, with Viwa on it, um, which was awesome. Um, th these women killed each killed each other. Uh, but then eventually, Viwa hits a coup de gras off a ladder through a table on the Jenna um, and gets the win. And that was just, this was just a great match. I'm giving it four and three quarters. This might be my best, my favorite match on the show so far. Uh, though we still have two matches left, so let, let's see what happens. But this one I thought was a really great match. It's not five stars though, because like I said, if they had maybe cut five minutes, maybe it would have been five stars. And like I said, I always have that notion where if you have to ask yourself if it's a five-star match, it's not. Well, I didn't really have to ask myself. I'm like, yeah, this went a little bit too long. So maybe if the match had been, you know, about five minutes, sort of, it would have been a five-star match. But uh, other than that, that's that. And, you know, now Viwo advances in the tournament. I believe she's going to face... I actually have the bracket. She's going to face the winner of Deanna Thomas, Re uh, uh, Rebecca Rose, and Lizzie Gray's triple threat match. So she's going to face the winner of that match. Um... But yeah, um, I really like this. I actually picked Elisa Vasile to win this match because I didn't really know anybody else that was in the match. Um, I know, you know, um, Alicia and, um, you know, uh, Viwa in real life, but I've never met um, Jenna. I don't even know if Jenna really exists in real life, but, um, you know, Alicia was the one I knew the best. But um, as the match went along, I definitely uh, rooted for... Uh, Viva, because she was like the sympathetic baby face that was like being double teamed and had to uh, rise up um, against the had to fight against the odds and everything, which I thought really worked in the match. So yeah, four and three quarter star match. I thought it was great. Okay, so next we had a um, Gold Rush Extreme Wars Falls Count Anywhere tournament match uh, round two. It was Mark Young versus Jason G. But before the match started, um, Mark Young and Jason G had a uh, backstage segment uh, where Mark Young confronted Jason G talking about how no one's going to stand in his way of getting of winning the tournament and becoming the first ever WIWO champion. Jason G says that he shows lack of disrespect um, towards everybody um, in the company and the company itself, and um, he uh, is sick and tired of him walking around like he owns the place. And Mark Yun, um insults him, saying by the way he looks, and says that Jason G's lost a step, but also says that he he doesn't walk around like he does own the place. He walks around because he does own the place, um, and you know he he goats. Jason G into a fight backstage by saying we don't have to wait to go to the win. So Jason G headbutts him and they get into a fight. Um, Jason G throws him into a camera. Um, he throws him back first into a, some equipment boxes backstage. He slams the door into his face and it's so out of control that uh, the match the the match doesn't even start yet. They're just brawling. Um, and Jonathan Caterer gets told via his your piece by G Jim Cornette that once they get to the win, the match will just start. Um, so they just continue to brawl. Um, they brawl onto the. They make it all the way out out to the stage. Um, Mark Young hits a belly to back suplex onto the stage. Jason G hits a neck breaker on the stage, a DDT, and they fight all the way. Uh, they fight down the ramp. Um, Mark Young hits a um, wicked um, forearm right onto Jason G, and um, he throws him into the post. Um, and then eventually, uh, Jason G throws him into the um, into the win. He hits an elbow drop right into his right into his head. And once they get into the win, the match finally starts, and they continue to beat the crap out of each other. Um, Jason G grabs a slug hammer, and they both. 
um, try to prevent each other from hit um, from getting hit with it. Jason G finally hits Mark Young right across the shoulder with it, and they continue to beat the crap out of each other. Uh, Mark Young throws Jason G into the barricade. Um, he throws him into the steps. He grabs a steel chair, but it gets reversed. But eventually, um, Jason G um, G gets hit with the steel chair. Uh, Mark Young tries to hit like a drop kick, but Jason G catches him by hitting him right um, with the guitar. Um, and they continue to brawl all over inside. They, um, Jason G bounces Mark head, uh, Mark Young head first off the announcer's table. Um, they grab the wind bell and uh, Mark Young hits him with the wind bell uh, right, right in the ribs. And then eventually Jason G hits Mark Young in the ribs and then in the back of the head with the wind bell. Um, Mark Young hits Jason G off the head with a kendo stick, which busts him open. Um, and um, then they fight over to the arena. Um, Jason G, not Jason G, Mark Young hits the vice right on right on the outside, like to, um, right onto just flat out concrete. Um, and he tries to get the win, but he doesn't get it. Um, Mark Young hits a crucifix like right into the steel steps, uh, which was pretty damn awesome. And they continue just brawling. They hit each other with replica with a replica championship belt. Um, and um, Mark Young hit, um, hits a big boot while uh, Jason G's head's like against the steel post, but he doesn't get the win off of that. Um, Jason G hits the bomb on the outside, but he doesn't. Uh, but he doesn't get the win off of that. And then he hits a diving headbutt um, off the top turnbuckle through a table right onto Mark Young, but Mark Young still kicks out. And they continue fighting. They grab a baseball bat and I believe a kendo stick or something like that. And they both hit each other with those at like the same time and they both fall down. Um, which, you know, that was pretty goddamn... No, it was a clutch actually. That was my bad. Um, and... Uh, Jason G beats the crap out of Mark Young with the crutch, and then the fight spills onto the outside. Um, you know, Jason G continuously uh, beats the crap out of um, Mark Young, and Mark Young's begging for mercy, but eventually Jason G spears Mark Young through the barricade. He goes for the cover, doesn't get the win. Jason G, though, ha can easily win the match with the bomb, which is, it's basically uh, Fireman's... Um, a fireman's, you know, a fireman's carry. Um, it's an AA. I forget what. It, um, but, um, and um, he taunts too much, which causes him not to get the win because he took too much time. And um, they hit each other with the steps. They suplex each other onto the steps. Um, Jason G hits another diving headbutt. Uh, Mark Young low blows Jason G. Hits another vice, but doesn't get the win. Um, hits a camel clutch, but Jason G gets out of it. And then he, um, um, Jason G gets a unique submission move right onto Mark Young, but I don't know what the name of it was, but it was like a face buster into the submission, but Mark Young got out of it. Uh, Mark Young hit a, um, Jason G off the head with a crutch, and then an elbow drop, doesn't get the win. And Jason G hits Mark Young with the, in the head with a guitar, but, and busts open Mark Young, but he doesn't get the win either. Uh, Mark Young power bombs. No, Jason G power bombs Mark Young through a ladder. Uh, doesn't get the win. Mark Young reverses a move off the top rope into a scoop slam. Doesn't get the win. Then eventually, uh, Mark Young finally gets a win with a sit down power bomb. Um, it is uh, Jason G his head goes he back at the head first into the steps and gets the win. And Jason G and Mark Young advances in the tournament. I think he's going to face the winner of Kyle Weaver versus Corey Dangerous, um, I believe, which kind of makes the main event a bit predictable because I don't expect the Maggie Daddy men to be fighting each other in the tournament. That really wouldn't make any sense. But I really like this. I thought this was a great match. It's, it was probably the weakest out of the four matches, including this one, that I've seen so far. But it was still a great match. Um, it was more of a brawl than a match. And I actually kind of thought that benefited the match because this match needed a way to be able to follow that women's match, and I thought this was a great way to do that, so I'm going to give this match four stars. I thought it was a great match, um, and I thought the white person went over. You know, it makes sense to have the Maggie Daddy men stay in the tournament, so this makes me question if Mark Young, because um, I don't know who's going to make it to the finals. Um, it's still too soon to tell, because we have to probably wait till we get to, like, the semifinal 
portion of it to really know. But yeah, I thought this was a great match. Four stars. I thought Jason G looked really good. I thought Mark Young looked really good. And like I said, I probably missed some spots. But just go watch these matches and then you'll understand what I'm talking about. So yeah, I thought this match was great. And I love the way the commentators reacted. You know, um, Jonathan, um, Jonathan Caterer and Nathan Falal. Nathan Falal is supposed to be the heel commentator. So he's like defending him. But uh, the Maggie Daddy men are such heels that he typically doesn't. But this time he did because... Um, Jason G kind of started this fight in a way, so Nathan Falal, uh, I mean, Jonathan Cater, um, Cater was kind of like, no, it was, um, you know, Mark Young that kept provoking him. So I liked that part of it, and yeah, I thought this was a great match, four stars. Okay, so before the main event starts, I figured I would give you guys the updated brackets for the Gold Rush Tournament. Uh, this is going to be the quarterfinals. So after the main event, we'll completely know the quarterfinals. But I figured since it's up, I'll um, tell it. And thank you, thank you, WIW, for listening to me. Even though this air before I said something, I wanted a bracket. And I'm getting a bracket. So happy about that. So um, for the quarterfinals so far, um, we have um, Michael X versus um, Brandon Curtis. Brett Mention versus James the Archangel, uh, Sean Mavic versus Taka Michinoku, and Mark Young versus the winner of Kyle Weaver versus Corey Dangerous. Which, like I said, I imagine Kyle Weaver is going to win because they're not going to have two people in the same faction face each other. Uh, but I still think the match will be great. Predictability isn't always a bad thing in wrestling, so I still think the match will be great. Um, but I'll be surprised if Corey Dangerous actually pulls out a win and they actually have Mark Young and Corey Dangerous have to fight each other. But I think it's too soon for that. You just established that stable. You shouldn't like tease a breakup or anything like that. But I think all of these matches um, will actually be, uh, you know, um, great. I think Brett Mention versus James the Archangel will be great because of the storyline they can tell with, with Brett Mention taking out Johnny Starr and everything like that and the relationship that James the Archangel and Johnny Starr have with each other. Uh, Michael X versus Brandon Cordes I think could be great as well. And I think big Sean Mavic versus Takamichi Nuku is going to be awesome. I think the best match out of these four um, is probably going to be James the Archangel versus Brett Mention because of the storyline. But I still think these will all be awesome matches. But enough talk. Let's get to the main event. Okay, so then we had the main event. It was um, round two in the Gold Rush Tournament. Um, Extreme Rules, False Count Anywhere match. Coy Dangerous versus Kyle Weaver. And I thought this match was awesome. Um, it might be five stars, but since I just said that, it's not. Because, like I said, if you have to ask yourself if it is, then it's not. Actually, I'd say it is. It's probably five stars. Um, and anyhow... Um, yeah, it was Kyle Weaver versus Corey Dangerous, and I really like the hype video package that we used to really hype up this match. You know, you have Kyle Weaver, who's upset with Corey Dangerous because he's shown disrespect towards the business. Well, at least just WIW, but, you know, it's part of the of a wrestling business because it's a wrestling company, but whatever. And he's taken out, like, his mentors and his friends, uh, but then you have Corey Dangerous, who wants to do whatever it takes to win the tournament and become the WYW champion. Uh, it's really an awesome video package. It really makes the match and it really makes the story of the match and you get to kind of see Kyle Weaver be this underdog baby face, really having to overcome aggression, saying that he wants to destroy Corey Dangerous. But you might have Corey Dangerous who's just willing to do whatever it takes to win uh, and become the first ever WYW champion. It's awesome. Match is awesome. I, lo I, I didn't really mention this before, but I really like Kyle Weaver's theme song. Um... And Koi Dangerous theme song because it's Eminem and Eminem just works. Um, I'm glad they used Eminem. So that's pretty awesome. But this match was fantastic. Uh, Kyle Weaver just destroys Koi Dangerous in the beginning with a reverse Hurricane and he just beats the crap out of Koi Dangerous. But Koi Dangerous, uh, it's a comeback, well, not really a comeback, but you know, finds a way to get in control of the match. And they kind of just start feeling each other out towards the beginning. Um, but Kyle, um, Kyle Weaver bust Corey Dangerous open with a replica world championship belt and just bust him open by hitting him right off the face with it. And they continue the match. Kyle Weaver hits a um, a spinning power bomb right onto the floor, uh, but doesn't get the pinfall. Um, Corey Dangerous 
um, bust open Kyle Weaver by hitting him off the head with a clutch, um, which they got busted open like five minutes into the match, too. It was crazy. Um, and they just proceed to have like this awesome match where they just beat the shit out of each other. Uh, Kyle Weaver misses an elbow drop through the through the announcer's table. Uh, on to Corey Dangerous, he hits a um, Dynamite Destroyer. Um, into the ladder, he could have gone to the, for the win right there, but he didn't. Uh, Corey Dangerous hit several power bombs throughout this match. One in the apron, uh, which was, uh, you know, similar to what he, Kyle Weaver did to Owen Finch, um, which is myself, um, in the first um, round of the tournament. And he hits like several power bombs, one into the, he just hits two in a row, then one into the clutch. Um, Kyle Weaver hits a tackle through the barricade right on to Corey Dangerous. He hits a um, um, Hurricane like into the steps. Um, and then um, he hits a leaping arm um, drag off a ladder, which was awesome. He hits a, um, a um, he kicks him into the post while his head's prone against it. Uh, which that was pretty damn awesome as well. Um, hits him with the steps a ton of times. Kyle Weaver gets thrown into the steps. Um, that was pretty damn awesome. Um, you know, uh, Corey Dangerous hits Kyle Weaver in the ribs and then the back of the head with the look of world title belt. Um, he hits Kyle Weaver off the head with a chair. Um, Kyle Weaver hits a, um, you know, like a, um, even trade submissions, um, Corey Dangerous does Johnny Stowe's, um, crossface. They both try to exchange submission holds on each other, really trying to end the matchup. Um, and then Corey Dangerous hits the Dangerous DDT on a chair on the outside, doesn't get the win. Um, Corey Dangerous hits a, um, an uppercut from midair. He hits several, um, uppercuts in this match, a springboard one, and then his, uh, finisher. He had several thumb to the eye low blows, which that's kind of ridiculous if that's a signature, but whatever. Um, I, I wouldn't really want like a low blow to be my signature. Maybe that's why it's not five stars, because it's, it's kind of, I don't really like the fact that a low blows Koi Dangerous' is finisher. I guess, uh, like signature, I get that it's, uh, he's a heel and that's a signature, but I think there should be something else. Like, I, I don't recall any, like, wrestler having, um, a low blow as, like, you know, a signature. Um, but yeah, hits, uh, but yeah, the match just is this great match. Uh, you know, Kyle Weaver gets power bombed into the post. Um, and there's just so many other fantastic spots in this match. Kyle Weaver hits like a, um, a fisherman's neck breaker onto like a, the, like a chair. Um, and then he hits one off of a ladder into the barricade. Uh, which that was pretty goddamn awesome as well. Um, he hits the dynamite destroyer like several times in this match. Um, but then eventually the finish comes when he hits the Dynamite Destroyer into the ladder. And I did like that, uh, Kyle Weaver too did do the, like I already mentioned it, but the, uh, big boot with his head in the post because that's how Mark Young took out Johnny Stowe. So that made sense. Um, not Mark Young, Brett Mention, I'm sorry. Um, and Kyle Weaver wins the match, which makes sense because you don't want to have two heels going against each other. And you don't have, and it's two people that are in the Maggie Daddy men together. You don't really want to have them like have a match yet because um, you can't have them like have this blood match. This match though was a blood match, and it, it's four and three quarters. My favorite match of the show. The women's match though was close, but I think this match just had a little bit more storyline, um, and it was just crazy. Um, and you know, I, I like the fact that it went like a. Over 30 minutes, because, um, like I said, the storyline is very secondary. You, you completely forget that, uh, you know, uh, that it's um, a tournament match. You just think they're having a blood match. And I I do think of the, um, we'll, we will see this match again, probably. I think we're going to get, like, a tag team match at some point with Kyle Weaver and um, Johnny Starr versus Brett Mention and uh, Brett, you know, and Corey Dangerous, because that would make sense, because, uh, you know, Johnny Starr should want to go after um, Corey Dangerous, because he's the one that put the head out on him, so that would make sense. Um, but I thought this was just, you know, a fantastic match. I'm giving it four and three quarters. It's not quite five stars, um, because, um, you know, um, I don't really like the fact that Corey Dangerous, like, signatures a low blow and stuff like that. It's really stupid. Um, 
And it's not quite five stars. Like, I had to ask myself if it was a five star match. That just proves it's not a five star. Because if you have to ask yourself, it's not. You know a perfect five star match when you see it, but it's very close. Uh, I think we are going to see a five star match. We're getting very close in this tournament, and I think the next set of matches we would see five star matches. So now it's going to be. Um, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, Kyle Weaver versus Mark Yun in the quarterfinals. And it's going to be. Uh, Takamichi Noko versus Sean Mavic, um, in that James the Archangel versus Brett Mention and Michael X versus uh, Brandon Curtis. I think those are all going to be awesome matches. And yeah, this was just this was just an awesome match. So uh, definitely check it out. And that's pretty much the end of the review. As for what I thought of this show. I thought it was actually a fantastic show. I can't think of like really anything wrong with it. It's just really little nitpick stuff, but that doesn't really hurt my enjoyment of this show. I'm gonna give this show, um, this episode an A plus. I really can't think of anything wrong with this show. Um, everything which everything just worked in the show. All the matches delivered. Um, I like that they're telling stories lines with Kyle Weaver and Corey Dangerous with um, Jason G and you know uh, Mark Young um, and. I liked the woman's triple threat. I thought that was awesome. Um, I liked uh, Sean Mavic versus uh, Zach Kurosaki. And there was another match on this show, but I'm blanking on it. Because um, I know there was four of them. Oh, and I liked Taka Michinoku versus J-Bones. Um, and, you know, commentary was fantastic on this show. I actually like the fact that the commentators aren't... They're not just good at their job because, like, they call the action, but they're, they make you laugh sometimes. Uh... Like, you know, Nathan Farrell and, like, um, Jonathan Cato are awesome. Um, and I like Casey Gallagher. I like how he gets mad every time he steals his belt. The crowd was great on this show all the night. They had a reason to be, but they chanted things like, you know, fight forever. This is brutal. Things like that. I thought the crowd was awesome on this show. So, yeah, fantastic show. A+. Plus, and that's pretty much the end of the video. Uh, thank you guys for watching this, um, episode. So... Uh, by the time you see this, it's going to be midnight. Later on today, I'm going to upload both quarterfinals. Um, or, you know, tomorrow, depending on when this gets uploaded. Um, but, you know, Tuesday, um, April 16th, 2019, I'll be uploading uh, the quarterfinal matches of the tournament. Um, both of them. I'm just going to do both episodes in one day. And then... Uh, Thursday or Friday, I'll upload the Mega event. So yeah, I got. I'm. I'm gonna catch up and watch um, Weymouth Youth Wrestling. Um, I can't think of it. Uh, Immortal. I'm really excited about it. Um, as each episode passes, so definitely, if you haven't watched this yet, give Weymouth Youth Wrestling a watch because it's been awesome so far. Um, not a bad episode yet. So yeah. That's pretty much it, guys, though. A-plus episode. Uh, make sure you guys, though, uh, subscribe to the channel for more content and click on the bell. So that way, every time I upload a video, you guys get the notification for it. Uh, make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers and all the Talking Ada YouTube channels. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. And also, subscribe to Wayne Me Through Wrestling. Go find the YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Because I don't think there was an exclusive video. I think it was just this episode. So if there was an exclusive video, though, I'll come back and say something. Or I'll say it in the next episode. So that, that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.